Today, we're looking at Beethoven Sonata number five, opus 10, number one. Okay, the first movement. We're gonna look at this, take it apart a little bit. I do not know this sonata so well, but I have prepared uh, somewhat before this video. So this is a bit of a discovery process uh, for me as well. Okay, so what sonata am I talking about? Which one is that, number three, number five? That is this one. Okay, so let's just put this like this, and I think just so you guys can see, we're gonna switch the display like that. Okay, so you can see very well. And let's start taking it apart. So we have this star, it's very dramatic, C minor. taken that apart what we put a little fade here so, uh, that's nice okay so we start out yes with those dramatic chords and a little cut Beethoven seems to be specific enough about that unless it's just because double dots didn't exist but there is a little space here right there's a little space here I think we're on blue here yeah this is blue okay we'll stick with blue so Intentional or not, I would do it, okay? Same thing right here. Do those little spaces so that way, instead of having you actually makes the semblance of a little cut there. It's, it's kind of a subtle thing. It's almost like taking a breath, but you don't want to take time, right? Because you don't want, this has to say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, counting the main beats here, right? Or if we count one, two, three, 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 one. Likewise, we have, you know, these two short notes, these two staccatos, and that little rest there, okay? Whoops, not showing it, sorry guys. Okay, just circling rests here. So, in all that, Generally, whenever we have this rhythm, people often make this, the mistake of playing like this. Instead of... So keep it tight. Don't turn it into a triplet. One and... And this is like an answer, right? I think we could probably... Uh, lean a little on that chord and then resolve it. So as well as make a cut right there, right? See, so we're going to like that. And this do those two two notes the same. Those two quarter notes. So the same length and the same sound. Same length. We're talking about these two notes here. And the same sound as well, right? So don't do the last quarter note softer. Right? Keep them strong. That's really nice. If you think about that, that really adds to the character of the piece. All right. Then we have this yum ba dum And actually here, I did that maybe a little too loud a while ago. Our dynamic is still piano here. So yum Don't do the second one more. It's kind of tempting, but I think with Beethoven generally, if you just do exactly as he writes, we're in the clear here. So, and it's a good idea in this kind of square-like music to group things two by two. So we have these two go together. One and two. And this is something else. 
Is it fortissimo? There's an F, but that's not an F for fortissimo. It's just the F of rin, rinforzando, I guess. I should have pulled out the other edition here because this is bright cough IMSLP. But that's okay. That's kind of traditionally here. This is played louder. If you don't play it loud, just keep it very uh, in contrast with these other two. And notice the staccatos. You see these staccatos? Those are good. And the last one. So you have and this. We're going to repeat the thumb. I don't have the overhead cam today because it's not hooked up, but that's how it is. And another really nice detail is if you let go of that left hand here when you play the last octave in the right hand. So you see this right hand here is alone on that octave. Nothing else there. Then we have these. So this kind of thing. Okay, this is where it's really good to use the wheel. Right? Level one, you're just working with your fingers. That's not ideal. Level two, you have a better connection. This kind of connection here kind of like bringing the weight of your body, at least the arms for now, in front. So level three, connect it with more of your body. Then you have to wake up your, your legs and well, really you have to move where you're sitting, you know? So we're connecting the wheel. Two, three, one, two, three, one. That's it. Okay? So Beethoven loves this dramatic kind of suspense where we have this, you know, twice very uh, mysterious and soft. Three, one, two, three, one. Okay? And this one, fortissimo, right from the start, right? So make sure all of this is loud, right? And not just like that, right? If you need to, you might want to take a little time to place that chord because it's a little annoying to hit. But if you can do it directly, I think that's better. So again, what does a wheel do here? It gives us a little sense of, of movement. Kind of like, again, someone spins you around or you go around a corner really fast. What's the high point in this in the right hand? You know, is it... Is it the highest note? Or is it... Before the highest note? I think it's kind of like that, you know? Maybe somewhere before, like around, you know, between these two notes. Let's say it's between these two notes here. Two, three, oops, sorry, I'm not showing it. Between those two notes right there, there we go. Two, three, one. And then same thing here. Two, three, one. Ta -da 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 -da. So see, I just lightly placed that there because it's, it's just kind of annoying. Right, instead of Either are fine, it's just, if you can pull it off, then do it. So now, in the beginning, remember we had and then this soft answer, and then a second one with a different chord, and again, this soft answer. Now we don't have the soft answers, so it's more conclusive of the first theme of the exposition here. So we have Okay, we got those. And he writes fortissimo on each of those bars. He loves to do that. Just to remind you that they're really all out. So we know we didn't have that uh, we didn't have that little pianissimo or piano answer. We just went all the way. Yeah, really.
really go for those. I think if you, ex if you need to expand, that's okay. We can stretch a little bit. Yum pum, yum pum, yum pum. Instead of just saying ta da 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 and yum pa and rum pa and. We could stretch it out. Maybe at the very end. And yum pa and yum pa. Kind of like that. Because this is an important moment, right? This is the moment where now we have completed our first theme here. Right? That's the end of the first theme, and Beethoven gives us an entire bar of silence here. Right? That's, that's one there is for an entire bar of silence. So we need that. Very important as well, like I mentioned this in the beginning, but this is short, short, keep them the same length. Short, short. I think everyone's going to want to do this. It's not right. Okay, that's not that's not what he wants. And and Okay. Now I'm playing this and thinking that the the three fortissimos don't really sound louder, and it's hard because there's less going on. So maybe this could be just like a, a tiny bit reserved, not too much. It's forte. Of like that. that that's what could be one way of doing it. Now we get to our second theme. Three times this thing starts and with a sforzando. And again, like <laughs> every composer is doing this, twice the same thing. This is the first one. And now second one. And then a third one, but this one is the beginning of a longer phrase. Right? So, whoops, there we go. How about like that? So there we have it. See, we have number one here. This is the first one. And then, there we go, that's number one. We can even put a one here. And then ya da da dum, but in number two, ti da dum. And then here's number three, but that's much longer. Look at that line in the left hand. It goes all the way to there. It actually finishes there in the right hand. So sorry. So when you start the third one, you can be a little quieter because you're thinking about really where this is going. Uh, it's going a little further than the other two. So we have one, two, da, de, a, da, da, de, da, da, da. Where do we put the focal point? Could be there. Or could be there, right? Which is better? Versus. Sure, I think I like the first one of those, but you can decide for yourself. There's not one way of doing, <coughs> pardon me, of doing things. But in this case, you know, maybe that could be our focal point. And then you would do the same thing here. You'd go to that one there. Now here, you will not do the same thing. See, that's what happens all the time when we have this one, two, and then a long three. <laughs> Beethoven wants us to go to here, you know, and he writes it there. So you see that? So after having... Would be expecting to have... But now that gets kind of boring because we had it twice. So we don't do it. It keeps going. Okay, let's go on a little bit here. Now this is the first kind of sort of more tender thing we have here. And this note here, this B is gonna be the dominant of that next theme. 
in E flat major. So we've, we haven't modulated. No, we've modulated to the major, right? Because we were in C minor. So we're still in the three flats key, but we have a second theme, right? So again, just to do a quick little review of the sonata form, uh, in the exposition, we have our first theme. Then we have our modulating bridge. And then we have this. Second theme, which is always very contrasting with the first theme. Okay, get it? Okay, so when doing this theme, I'm sorry, missing B's in the bass. Okay, what do we need to know about this? Let's talk about it a little. So see we have that tum bum bottom. It's kind of like we're going to that note. I don't want to write crescendos and diminuendos everywhere, but you know, if we were, we're doing this. Okay? That's the idea when we do that. And then you have a second one, tian dun ti dum. Obviously, maybe not so obvious, but the first one should be a little more, and the second one should be a little less. <coughs> so we have See how that second one can be less. So I took a little time here. Why, you know, why do I permit myself to do that? It's a strategic moment. This is the beginning of the second theme here, right? This is the second theme. So again, it's a strategic moment. So we're not taking time anywhere just for any reason. Uh, coming back to this. Do we even need to take time? Maybe not, yeah? Maybe you don't even have to take time there. So if you do, take very little time, not too much. And what else about this? I'm liking this today. The second note, a bit more important. Instead of definitely not the first one. What about the fourth note? Definitely not the fourth note for the last group of those six notes, five notes. I would do them less and less, a little less, a little less. And if you really held this B flat nicely here in the left hand, then we should get these two notes stuck together. It's very nice. Isn't that nice? Little details sometimes to think about. Okay, second theme. Okay, a uh, lot of things, yeah? <coughs> Beethoven is pretty dense. So first here in this second theme we have yum pum 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 pum. I'm not really these are not necessarily staccatos, I just want to outline those notes. That's kind of nice to bring that out. And we're using, of course, rotation, this movement here. And in the right hand, right, that last note is staccato and it resolves from the E. So we do it like that. So if you're playing this, you haven't thought about this kind of thing enough, okay? Now let's go to uh, this page. How does that trill work? That's fine. You know, I didn't think about it too much, but there's, there's always more than one way of 
doing it. That's nice too, you know, if you start on the notes. I kind of like that. Otherwise, you start above. Okay, so we had again more on the first one. could be a little bit less. So it's not necessarily like and this one is more and this one is is less. It's not necessarily like that. It's it's almost more of an arch, you know? So you start out a little soft and then climb up to there. Right? Even if you resolve it. Why don't you do a crescendo here in the left hand after you've resolved the right hand? That, that'll help, okay? Because then you'll have... To, to, we want to connect these two, two things together. With this one, right? So you see that? What, what happened is we started this one uh, softer. we grew to hear this one we start louder and then we didn't grow to hear we're kind of dying down all the way here like that see and then he all right that's probably too much for a sforzando within the piano dynamic so we don't want it to be too loud. Sorry. I love when it happens. So don't crescendo until he writes it. You know, that's that's the general idea here. It's really hard, actually. I think I kind of slightly crescendoed there. And now this one is loud this time. See? So, yeah, that's a good idea. Whenever he writes crescendo, don't crescendo before he writes it. So, okay. Again, we're following those notes, the ones that are not the same all the time, the E flat, in other words. I like to start above. You can start uh, uh, on the A flat if you want for that trill. I think I have a good fingering here. So if you were like this. You should have one, two, four here. And then keep your two, four. One, two, four, two, four, one, two. And you put the thumb on the G. One, two, one, two, four, one, two, four. So we're not using three in here. One, two, four, one, two, four, like that. Make sure that we have here this silence so that we can do the syncopation that follows. And then the next one is not a syncopation, but he writes us for Zando. Right? So we have that. Oh, Beethoven loves to do that. Puts forzandos on, on notes that are off the beat. He's doing it very often. Okay, so there we have it. So here, okay, with that crescendo, go all the way. So when when you have this fortissimo, it's all the notes. All the notes are are loud, right? Not just Did I do 
do that right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's right. Okay, lots of staccatos here. Yep, you see that? So make sure again, short, short. And this for Zando is also short. Two by two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um. Two, three. Two, by two. Two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Um. Okay, what else can we look at here? Yes, in the left hand. All of them short. And why not do from the keys up? Yumpa three one two three one. Yumpa da da yumpa da 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 da. Even the last one, don't go. Keep it the same. One two three one two three. And look at that last four zando here. That's another off beats four zando as he likes them off the beats very often not all the time but look he's doing it again here this is kind of like a sforzando too because you have a forte piano right so maybe it's just because beethoven wants he wants us to hear that he wants to hear that note because it's longer perhaps otherwise maybe he would have written a sforzando so these, they could be done like that, or they could be done. I think I like them on the drier side. But if you want, you could do with pedal. But just you know, he did. He wrote the slurs in the left hand, so the the scale in the left hand is a bit more melodic, and these chords in the right hand, I would see them as more of a, a rhythmic gesture. <coughs> okay, so do it like that. Very tricky or tempting here to make that long every time. Ta ta ti da, dum bum pi da, and always the first note more than the second, right? Ya nan ti da off, bum bum ni da off, na 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 da off, ya nan off a dum ni da. Okay, that concludes the exposition, and. Do we look at the rest of this today? It's not going to be much different, okay? It's a lot the same stuff. I think we're going to go through it maybe a little. I, I will try to be a little quicker than, uh, than the rest, okay? But let's look at it. So here we go. So now we start the development here. Development. With a C major chord, how different from the way we started, you know? It's kind of surprise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Again with the answers, but what's different this time? If you if you look carefully at the score, <laughs> what happened to the forte on the first beat? <laughs> He's not doing it. <laughs> He's doing it a little differently here, right? Just like the beginning, we're leaning on that one. And going down, let's make that a little better, a little nicer. Whoops. And and the last note is kind of long, right? Okay. Okay, 
and then we go into this. So this is a, a variant on our second theme. You remember that? So now we have in minor here. It's similar, but the melody is quite different, right? So, okay. I think again, if you do exactly as he writes, so that means keeping this really piano here and kind of a, uh, hmm, plaintiff, is that the word? It's kind of searching here, you know? But look at the nice swell that he put there, you know? So just save the swell for where he writes it. One, two, three, one, do, 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 very gentle. Maybe a bit more swell than that. Very important, the E natural, E flat, D, right? We need to hear that. Yeah, I think we'll do the development another time, okay? I just want to have more time to look at it and go in the detail. I don't want to go through it in a rush, okay? So let's keep it short and sweet. We have one thing at a time here, okay? So there's, there we have it, okay? I think that pretty much covers it for this. You know, I think every time I play it, <clears throat> I'll think about something I forgot to mention. But that's kind of, that's how it is, you know, that's, that's the beauty of learning music. You're always in a refinement process, no matter what level you're at, you're always finding things to refine. Sorry, I have to turn off my notifications there. Oh, you didn't see that good. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're always refining things, no matter what level you're at, you know, and that's, that's part of the beauty. So me, when I go listen to this, I'll think of a few other things that I didn't mention. But there you have it. So I think that's a good start to this Beethoven uh, Sonata number five. Okay, so take care everyone. That's it, all right, peace over and out, and see you soon, happy practicing. <laughs>